My name is Missy Whiteman. I belong to the Northern Arapaho and Kickapoo Nations, and I grew up here in the Twin Cities area. I'm a filmmaker, writer, director, producer, and today I'm an artist. Part of my history here is actually being walking up and down Franklin Avenue, going to the Minneapolis American Indian Center, going to powwows, and I grew up seeing this neighborhood change. Like when I first moved here, I was like 10 years old, and this used to be a theater. And so my parents were always like, okay, close your eyes, and we're like, why? You know, every time we drove by, it's because it was an adult theater. And then it moved on to be abandoned, and I can remember being a teenager, you know, going here to the theater and going to raves. And one of the other artists who, you know, was on the project, he's like, we used to have hip hop shows in this theater. And so there's so much history here that isn't just native, it's like anyone who lived around here, you know, could see the change in this neighborhood from having like, having lined with bars, having it lined with liquor stores to the last liquor store being on like Chicago and Franklin Avenue and having Native mothers really lead that activism, lead, lead that push to get all of those bars and liquor stores out of the neighborhood. We're here to talk about the mural that I worked on. Um, we haven't quite find, found a name for it, but it's Mural on the Ave. And what we came up with is really a rough sketch of what we wanted to um, put on the wall. And then we projected that, traced it, and went from there. And there was definitely a lot of adjustments that we had to make, but overall, um, I think it turned out even better than the sketch, honestly. One of the things that we talked about this piece being is healing. So this year, the Jingle Dress had its 100th year anniversary, or a little bit more, but the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe recently acknowledged that history by having an exhibit, but also having more people learn about that tradition and learn about what it means to be someone who wears the dress and like how powerful that is. So we wanted to have her wear a jingle dress to signify healing, but also to honor our missing and murdered relatives. Then the headband too, because that was really for me, like how do I make this look beaded? And then how do I also, something for me, it's like you think about when you put together like your child's regalia or your niece or nephew or you know your relative, you take good care and you, um, you take the time for that. An important part of this mural is to have the acknowledgement of our ancestors. So if I was painting every morning or every time I would arrive, we would have a circle and we'd smudge and we'd pray and we'd off offer tobacco and just acknowledge like that this project is bigger, literally bigger than any one of us. And that, you know, the message really isn't ours, it's somebody else's. It comes from some other place. Um, the entire process in itself was community driven. So it was really a reflection of what the community looks like here in the Twin Cities and Phillips area, but also um, have the input from the community as we went along. So we would actually sketch things and then bring it back to the community. And we'd have community members come by every now and then and be like, okay, so I see this on the wall. That doesn't look like X, Y, Z, can you change it? And so we're like, yes, and then we would change it. So this is a community project that includes a community and has the community voice within it. So one of the other artists who is from the Twin Cities, her name is Katrina Knudsen, and I just met her on this project. And the really cool thing about this is she knows a lot of the history of the American Indian movement in the Twin Cities. And so she was really um, instrumental in creating this piece here because of a lot of like our round dances, a lot of our gatherings, a lot of our activisms, but also like creating a new messaging for what, what does it mean to be indigenous? Um, our indigenous migration routes have existed longer than your borders. And what that is in reference to is acknowledging the indigenous relationships that had occurred prior to colonial contact. 
So if we talk about borders, we talk about what's happening right now with families being taken you know, from their homes, and we're talking about that history, but we also relate that to boarding schools. We relate that to history that's occurred to Indigenous people here already. But what we're saying with that statement is that you can't take away that history. You can never take away that relationship. You can put up borders, you can put up walls, you can detain us, but we're always gonna find a way to reconnect. You know, like my Kikapu relatives are in Mexico. They're in Oklahoma too. So it's, it's not to say, who are we? It's like, well, we're Kikapu. We're not American, we're not Mexican. We're Kikapu, we're indigenous people that reside on both parts, you know, of the quote unquote border. You know, arts has always been a part of our activism as Native people. Um, this is something that continues to this day. If we look around the Twin Cities, we look at the cultural corridor, you see all kinds of murals on the walls, you see art everywhere, and it's very much indig indigenous centered. One of the things that I've noticed when people come by is like joy, like they're surprised, they're happy, and it brings joy to their life, but also is a reflection of really who they are as human beings. 